It is indeed a joy, a privilege to be with you this evening and uh, to be here to minister God's word. Thank you so much for praying for my wife. Uh, we are making progress, uh, but she does have to see a specialist and uh, covet your prayers that uh, we might be able to uh, have her um, problem uh, diagnosed and uh, they may be able to find uh, the remedy. She has very severe headaches and having a very difficult time. So please uh, pray for my wife, Marcia. Thank you for letting me be here. I'm just always delighted to, to come and uh, do pray the Lord's rich blessing as uh, we now uh, look to the Word of God. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 17, uh, verses 14 through 21. And when they were come to the multitude... They came to him, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. What we need to learn from this passage of Scripture, as we find in various other places in the Gospels, is that our greatest enemy is unbelief. It was said several decades ago, the only thing that we have to fear is fear itself. As Christians, the only thing that we have to fear is unbelief. If we're going to be blessed in our labors in the kingdom of God, we must do it by faith and for the glory of God. The success of our labor in the kingdom of God does not depend, thankfully, upon our might nor our power, but by the Spirit of God working through us by faith. I love that passage in the Old Testament Scriptures where it says, not by might, not by power, but by my Spirit. Pastor Ryan had mentioned about how sweet it is to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. We all, as believers, have the Holy Spirit working uh, in us. And we do need to pray that God would grant us a strong faith for these evil days. That God would help us to stand strong and to stand against uh, the things that are coming upon us. So may God give us a strong faith as we labor together in the kingdom of God. Of course... Uh, we strengthen our faith through the uh, means of grace. That is, through the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Uh, we strengthen our faith through prayer. Uh, we strengthen our faith through the means of, uh, of grace, such as the, the Lord's Supper, the sacraments. And so, whatever we may do to strengthen our faith, that really ought to be uh, a focus in our life. Now, as we study the ministry of the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
we, we find that the one thing that the Lord Jesus Christ takes notice of amongst his disciples is their faith. Whenever difficulties arose uh, amongst his disciples, he would either see their faith as strong and commend them. But of course, that faith is a grace that's given to us. Yet, our Lord Jesus reminds his disciples again and again and again, your faith is weak. We can go through the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. And uh, the disciples were anxious about what they might eat and drink and, and wear. And he said, O ye of little faith, how much time do we put into uh, what we eat and drink and, and what we wear and, and the, the temporal things? Yes, they are needful. But we need to commit these things into the hands of the Lord and keep our focus upon the furtherance of his kingdom. We ought not to be anxious about these things. We know that the Lord will provide for us. We are his people. He has covenanted to be our God, and we are his people. He is our Father. God is our Father, and he will provide. In chapter 8, here we have in Matthew chapter 8, verse 26, the disciples were in ship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't think of a safer place to be, even if there is a storm. <laughs> but we find that as the storm began to rage, the disciples said, Lord, save us, we perish. In verse 26 of chapter 8 in Matthew, Jesus said to his disciples, why are ye fearful? So when you're feeling fearful and you're feeling the, the shadow of doubt and fear setting in, remember this. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ to his disciples. Why are ye fearful? O ye of little faith. And then we come to the 14th chapter here in the book of Matthew and we have the incident with uh, Peter uh, walking upon the water, and he began to sink. And he cried out, Lord, save me. And immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught Peter and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? So we find oftentimes uh, the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ were reproved by our Lord Jesus Christ for their weak faith. And what is even more amazing is how that uh, there was this uh, Gentile centurion uh, that believed the Lord Jesus Christ, and he said, I've never seen such faith, no, not in all of Israel. How do we account for this? The grace of God. Faith comes to us by God's grace, but God works faith in us through means. That's what I want to emphasize this evening. And so we come to another incident here in Matthew 17 uh, where there is a man who has a son uh, who is uh, possessed with some sort of an evil spirit and uh, cast this son into water and into the fire. And uh, the disciples prayed for this son. They were not able to heal the son. Now, the gifts of the apostles are given to us in Matthew chapter 10, verses 6 through 8. Our Lord says to his uh, apostles, he says, You are to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach. And I do want to emphasize the preaching of the word was a task of the apostles and of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is through the preached word that lives are transformed. The purpose of the miracles was to confirm the message that they were hearing, that they were preaching that which is 
according to the Word of God, which is the Word of God. But our Lord says to His apostles, He said, go preach, saying, the kingdom of God is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Now, there are those who would, uh, in our time, say that we are still living in those times of the apostolic gifts. Uh, they do not understand uh, what uh, the Scripture says, the purpose for those apostolic gifts was. The purpose for the apostolic gifts was for the confirming of revelation. Turn, if you will, to uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 2. It speaks about the apostles going and preaching as Jesus told them to do, bearing witness to the Word of God. Note in verse 4, both with signs and wonders and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own Word. But in the previous verse, we see the purpose for these extraordinary gifts was for the confirming of revelation. How shall we escape? Paul says to the Hebrews, if we neglect so great salvation that which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed, that gospel message, confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And as I read, Confirmed it how? Bearing witness through the miracles which they perform. Now that the canon of Scripture has closed, we see that uh, there is uh, no longer that usefulness. And some will say, well, then you must not believe in miracles. And I, I would say, yes, I do. I think the greatest miracle is the new birth. And God does. Uh, he does regenerate. He is continuing to call his people. And so uh, what we want to note here is that the miracles uh, that were done in those days were for the confirming of the message of the gospel. Our Lord Jesus Christ, along with Peter, James, and John, in the preceding verses that I just read, had gone up to what we call the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, that is where our Lord Jesus Christ was transfigured and uh, he had uh, manifested that glory as the Son of God unto Peter, uh, James, and John. And they were coming down from that mountain. And when they came down from the mountain, that mountaintop experience, here uh, the other uh, nine apostles were struggling with unbelief, trying to cast out a demon uh, out of this man's son. And they were not able to do so. As we note, beginning in verse 14 and following, and when they were come to the multitude, that is, uh, our Lord Jesus, Peter, James, and John, coming off that mountain, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for all times he falleth into the fire, oft into the water, and I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. And we read in verses 19 and 20 why it was the disciples uh, could not cure him. They came to Jesus and asked Jesus, why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Just think about it. What could be done with our lives more through faith? How we ought to spend each day as a day that is, uh, as it were, our last. And that we would spend it in such a way that we might bring utmost glory unto God. But to do so, we must be blessed 
uh, with faith. Although the work of the Christian ministry is a work of God, the unbelief of God's servants here, we see, disabled them to carry out their duty. All of us are serving our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need faith to carry out His will for our life. So our Lord repeatedly tells His disciples. And uh, that message is for us all here this evening as well. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, uh, ye shall have them. Sometimes we have not those things which we desire because we don't ask. That's what James says in James 1.17. If you do not ask in faith, uh, we think not that you'll receive anything of the Lord. So, beloved of God, uh, let's look at this incident here with the father's son who was possessed with the devil as a lesson to us of what unbelief can do in hindering of the work of God. I believe God is able to do great things through his people. I believe God is able to do great things through faithful churches uh, such as uh, Grace OPC and, and many other faithful churches that are holding fast to the word of God. But just as it was in those early days of the apostles, it's a work of faith and a labor of love, as the apostle says. Note secondly, the unbelief was displeasing to the Lord. Verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation. Now, faithless here, uh, here is referring to uh, their uh, lack of having this grace uh, applied to them in doing miracles, miraculous faith. He calls them perverse. The word perverse here doesn't necessarily mean, we use that word to mean uh, pervert in, in that sense, but it has also the sense of, of being turned out of the way. That is, from the way of faith to un, unbelief. So unbelief is really an enemy that we need to beware of and pray that God would strengthen our faith as we labor for his glory. The Lord had been good uh, with them, his disciples, demonstrating many miracles in their presence. And he asked them, how much longer shall I be with you until you overcome your unbelief? The Lord is asking them, how much longer must I suffer uh, with you? And so it is a thing that uh, is unpleasing to the Lord. And so by a way of application, beloved, just as our Lord Jesus is displeased with the unbelief his disciples, so also uh, he is displeased with our unbelief. I think one of the saddest uh, verses that I read in the New Testament is when our Lord Jesus Christ went to the city where he grew up. And you're familiar with the passage where it says that a prophet is not without honor save in his own country. And so he comes to his own country in Nazareth. And uh, the scripture says that he could not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So our Lord Jesus Christ then uh, rebuked a devil in Matthew 17, 18. Note the 18th verse. Jesus then rebuked this devil that the apostles were not able to cast out. And he departed out of him, and the child was cured that very hour. Now, when we sense the onset of unbelief, 
we need to remember the words uh, of Mark 9.24. It's the same account same, of the same incident of a father with a son possessed of a demon and the disciples weren't able to cast out the demon. And the Lord tells the father that he will cast out the demon, but you must believe. And the scripture says in Mark 9.24 that the father said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. As we note further in verses 19 through 20, not only did we see the disciples sabled in their Christian service because of unbelief, we should also note that the scripture assures us that nothing shall be impossible with God. There have been moments in, in my own particular ministry where it seemed uh, there were mountains that needed to be moved. And the thought came to me, how are we going to be able to see this one through? And by trusting the Lord, it, it's amazing uh, how through that grace of faith which he gives to us, he does move mountains. That is, he does things which are impossible with man and only possible with God. Our Lord tells us that if our faith is as a grain of mustard seed, that is, it may be little in quantity, but if it's true faith, good in quality, it is able to move mountains. You could say, Lord, the Lord says to the mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Let us always keep these thoughts in our mind as we come to prayer. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that with God, nothing shall be impossible with him. It is his work, and it is for his glory. And so the Lord is teaching us here, beloved, that we need to take note of our faith and our trust in him. The Lord asks the question about when he comes again. Will there be any faith when he comes back? least suggest to us perhaps little faith, but we need to deal with now the, the issues that are before us now. All the things and circumstances of our lives at this present time are, are upon us because God has so ordained these things, even from before the foundation of the world. How I've found such great comfort in Ephesians 1. Uh, the uh, verses of 2 and 3, I believe it is, that um, I better turn there if I'm being fact-checked. But <laughs> uh, Ephesians 1. Beginning in verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Faith is a spiritual blessing. It is a grace that God gives to us in Christ. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yes, nothing shall be impossible with God. And we, we as Christians need to stand up. We need to uh, have the message of the gospel sounding forth from our lips, telling others of salvation through Jesus Christ, praying for our dear lost loved ones and friends. We have a powerful gospel, and we know that 
the regeneration of a life wherein we are made new creatures in Christ Jesus is a demonstration of great power. And God works that uh, through uh, his own way and means. But we as laborers together in the kingdom of God, we need to enter into this labor daily by faith. We need to pray that God would grant us a stronger faith. We need to study God's word more. Those passages of scripture that call us to be strong in the faith. We find that uh, the Apostle Paul, his faith was greatly tested, greatly tried. But when it came to the end of his life, as he writes in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. Now, it wasn't through his work. It was through God working in him, through the Spirit of God. Such precious, exceeding precious, and many promises we have in Scripture as the Apostle Peter reminds us, we have many exceeding great and precious promises. And we need to cast ourselves upon the promise of God. Throughout this coming week, there's not a one of us here who is not going to have an, a, an issue, a matter that we're going to have to pray about. And we need to come to the Lord believing that He is going to hear and answer our prayers, even as, as he has promised. May God be with us as we seek to serve him, to be like Enoch. Scripture says in Hebrews 11, 5 through 6, by faith, Enoch was translated. That is, he did not die. He went from earth to heaven. Was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, there's not a one of us here that, that do not want to, I'm sure, that do not want to please God. We do want to please God. But the scripture goes on to say, Hebrews eleven six. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. We see how sorely displeased the Lord was with his disciples because they did not cast out the demon from the Son. And then the Lord Jesus Christ did. But our Lord Jesus Christ goes on to say in that passage of Scripture uh, there in Matthew 17, after the disciples asked, why could not we cast out that evil spirit? And our Lord Jesus Christ said, this cometh not out, but by prayer and fasting. In verse 21. Some say, well, I don't think that fasting is for this generation. Well, our Lord Jesus Christ Christ said that after uh, he would ascend into heaven, then his disciples, as long as the bridegroom, meaning himself, was with his disciples, they didn't fast. But when the bridegroom is taken, then uh, his disciples will fast. Surely it is a biblical thing, prayer and fasting. And our Lord is making a statement here about why they couldn't cast out the evil spirit. He said, this goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. There's a dear friend of mine, mentioned to him about a loved one that is lost. And... Asked, I asked him to be in prayer for this particular individual. And he said, you know, what you need to do 
is weep. You need to weep for that one. We need to cry, just like the father, he cried out to Jesus that his son might be delivered. May God give us such faith. We would cry out to God with tears. Yes, beloved, let us not be deceived. Unbelief, unbelief is no small sin. It is unbelief those who do not believe in the Son of God, who will spend eternity in hell. In John 3, 17 through 18, the Scripture says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, May God give us grace to walk in obedience to our Lord's command. To pray that he would give us a strong faith and to stand in the, the evil day that we may be able to stand against all the wiles of the devil, devil that are hurled at us and all the things that the world is hurling. It seems like it gets worse as the years go by. And so we need to have a strong faith. Stay in the word. Pray for that grace of faith. We're reminded that it is a gift in Ephesians 2.89. For by grace are we saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. And oh, how it will encourage our hearts too as we read scriptures such as Hebrews 11. Uh, some of those... Uh, heroes of the faith. And may God give us that faith to stand strong in our evil days. Amen.